Get some well, adventures, y'all. Get some adventures, y'all. What are we doing today? We're making a knife. This is part two, y'all. Yeah. Part two. And I'm sorry, I messed up. Stay tuned to part two on the other video. <laughs> I'm sorry. But mistakes happen. Yeah, they do. Yeah, this is when he made a part one. Of course, you've seen it. Good job. Yeah. And then okay. you make it out of the saw blade. That's yeah. cool. And it, you can make it about in any saw blade. It really don't matter the size. You can cut out the size. And uh, we got all the protection, my ear protection, my glasses, and Daddy has gloves. What's these for? So these are for the handle. Oh. These are for the handle, deer horns, he said. If you, uh, if you didn't watch that video yet, you can hear... He's going to use these for the yeah. uh, handle. Well, which we got tons of pieces, y'all. And uh, we're going to do part two. And yeah. uh, so, uh, you guys seen in part one, uh, I am going to try to get a little more in depth on this video. But yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a bit of stuff. Also, y'all. All right, we'll start get, with that. Yes, we need a backup. We need a backup well, cutter. Yep, this is a cutting wheel is what yep. he's saying. And this one, y'all, is a it's grinding a wheel. wheel. It's a grinding wheel that so, sands down. Y'all are definitely, if you're just going to use a grinder to try to get this done, uh, we are trying to keep this as simple as we could. So if you got a table, an old table, just use the vise to hold the saw blade. You're going to need that. You, you don't don't want to be holding the saw blade and trying to run the grinder because it's not, it's not real super easy to cut these angles out. That's what the grinding wheel's for, so you can just hand grind it. If you don't have a bench grinder, uh, you are going to have to use a, a regular grinder for the have for your hand grinder. I have protection ready, y'all. have my glasses and, and these. You do not have to use deer horns, so that's our preference. You can use wood. Leather. Um, yeah, you can yeah. use leather. You can use, you can use paracord. Paracord, uh, rope. You know, so... So anyway, what you can see what I did here just to Isaac explained the cutting wheel. Yeah. And this is like as good as you're going to get your first cuts out. So I've traced this. I bought this knife. Um, it's not an expensive knife, um, but we are about the same thickness. You can see that you would yeah, buy in that's, the store. Uh, Daddy's knife. Yeah. He bought. But I like the design of this. This is a great little bushcraft. It's not something expensive it's something that you can beat up a little bit and uh, i liked it with the paracord um it came with the black sheath which i didn't like and then of course you guys can hand make your own little sheath yeah. so we it's real this, light now and um we me and daddy punched all of them we punched all there. the holes in it but that's in another video anyway get your knife you can cut it yeah. out on a piece of paper of course, and, uh, he didn't sharpen it yet. He just cut it out. All right, let me explain a minute. Okay. And then, so, I want this knife a little bit bigger. So, it's, that's, I mean, you can see it just outlined it. The rest of it, y'all, is going to be with your grinder. You can cut, I'm getting notches in it. This is going to be a wire um, slash stripper. You did, uh, I used to, uh, I just used a hole in the saw blade. And I'm going to leave that in there. I kind of like that. And you can bend wire and stuff with it. So um, this is going to be my own little bushcraft knife. It's going to be a side carry. Um, you're going to carry it on the side instead of... I think of, uh, this is going to be, like be that. my knife, isn't it, Daddy? Yep. Yeah, this is going to be my so, knife. Pliers for holding. Your saw blade. A cut tool. Yep. Eventually, you're going drill. to need a drill. You don't have to. You guys can use... Um, you guys can use some epoxy and just epoxy a handle on there it's not going to be super strong um so just trying to open part two up with some yeah. basics to part one on uh we haven't really went any farther than what we did in part one except i just cut an extra one out and you guys got to see that you just kind of don't get too close to your lines you guys just use your hand grinder to do that start shaping it we're going to get started again though yeah Eye protection and ear protection. On.
Hey. All right, y'all. So I'm thinking about Isaac's little hand. Um, I hope y'all's getting that, that, that the light <laughs> glaring on it. But So it's going to be quite a bit smaller. Um, I'm wanting to make the baby a little carry knife when we go camping, and, and I'm going to have my own too. So that's what the... Daddy That's what I did with this, this one. Now. And I'm going to do something a little different with mine. And uh, so anyway, you're just, you can't mess this up, guys. Just use the hand grinder, go real slow, and make your lines. That You're going to get yeah. mistakes. This is a little, just a notch where my I, I slipped. And, and this stuff's going to happen. Um, so the sanding and your steel wool and your final finish is going to be completely up to you, so... But this is this is all going to be covered, guys. So it doesn't hurt if you get notches in this. It actually helps um, if you're going to do an epoxy handle wow, for it to have some cool. ridges to, uh, you know, t the glue to set in a little better. You can sand reflectors. this. And, uh, you know, this is some paint. We're going to need to take this off that was on the saw blade. And just like the back of the other one I cut out, I got to get all that off. So a lot of it's just time consuming. Just take your time. Anybody can do this. So we're going to, next we're going to figure out what we want for a handle. Do we want to pinhole it? Do we want to cut this off and then just shove it in the handle? Um, those are some things that you're going to have to determine on what you like and the feel of your hand and how big your hand is. So this, uh, I think this is cool enough. Put your hand right there, baby. Just easy. But see how that... See how that y'all fits in his hand real close your hand real slow on that. See that? And his that little and his perfect. little yeah, and his little finger's gonna fit in there. That's what I was doing, so. And this is a fun I mean this this knife fits me. That's the way that other one was. And it's just a short little handle. But just don't get cut on it. So um <laughs> I have decided that I'm gonna take a scrap piece of horn and this ain't easy, but you can do it, y'all. Yeah, you're probably so this, uh, wondering where Daddy got the horns from. It, he uh, cut it off a deer, didn't you? Watch yeah. where they come from. Yeah, he cut it off a deer, but of course I wasn't born in yet. Um, after deer season, normally yeah, um, February, we go shed hunting while we're out hiking and stuff, y'all. And You can find these in your local woods and... So, I'm going to switch out this grinding wheel, and I'm going to show you what I do with this. So. so, this ain't going to be easy, but that's why you got some pliers. You need to be careful. Um, I'm not sure which one. I think I might start with this one, actually. Um... I'm trying to think you just kind of think what would be the best here's the here's what i'm here's what i'm wanting to show you so if we're going to pin this i need this horn to be wide enough to where it covers that handle I, uh, so that's really really close actually you're going to be setting that like that so just imagine this saw blade is going to be piercing that horn just like that oh hey daddy do you have more of this rope yeah yeah, I want some on mine. There's a little trick to this, and if it works out, you guys will get to see that. I'll put rope on mine, y'all. Make it more comfortable. This is not not the easiest thing to do. I don't... Sometimes you're going to mess up, y'all. Uh, I might end up having to cut this one down and use this one, but I'm going to try to make that one work. So you can see that that one's definitely bigger. Probably should use this one actually because it's going to come up a little higher. I want that horn to stop right there. So, you know, before you cut things, y'all just make sure it's going to work. Let's put this one in. We can save this one for something different anyway. So, let's see if we can't do that. Let's cut this off first.
do suggest if you're if you don't run tools a lot y'all put them in a vise when you cut them i don't only have to have run them for so long Shoot. i'm confident Ooh. it does it stinks really Shoot. weird it's like uh y'all ever cut a deer dogs. horn dogs it almost smells like dog breath yes. puppy breath that's about kind of funny and look how smooth that is y'all I don't That's know if I'm going to be able smooth. to get to this or not. So, this, I'm showing you guys the easiest possible way I know, and I've done, and I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. It's not something your production, maybe, if, oh it's just rustic way to make a knife. So, when you think about this, I'm going to have to get this in here. I think this blade, this one's actually a hair thinner. Oh, you better um, be not using that because that's. Bad luck. Uh, let's see. <laughs> trying to see the thickness. No, we're definitely going to have to be that thick. All right. I'd rather you. I've got to try to run this as best as I can all okay. the way through that. Do your best. Do your best, y'all. So you see what I've accomplished, but you can see what's happening. You can see what it's, it's wanting to run off, okay? You ought to see how smooth Now we're going to have to come in here, now. and we're going to have to do it the other way. gonna close up it's not gonna be easy but when I get done you're gonna sand a lot of this off and Isaac has got small hands so he doesn't have to have a thick one I'm gonna see if I can get this cut Let's see if it's gonna do it yeah. Here, get fresh air. All right, oh, it's so smoky in here. We got two halves, y'all. It's not flat, but I'm going to show you what you can do. So we're just going to cover that metal with some beautiful deer horn. And uh, like I said, it's a lot better if you use a, if you got something a little thicker. But for my hands, I would want to use the thickest horn I could find and then sand it down. But I'm going to do something different. And uh, when we go into that big knife, I'll show you. But just make you something, y'all. And it's not going to be flat, but believe it or not, it'll flex a little bit. So stay tuned for the handle. All right, y'all. So we got some pieces. I cut another one um, that was a little wider. So you, you're going to see that we have plenty of imperfections trying to cut that. Uh, but we're going to grind all this down y'all i'm going to show you you can take this dust and and grind that stuff back and we're going to epoxy all this so you can fill all this stuff in where you're not going to see that and that's going to be in the final steps so what we're going to end up having to do we're at this point so you don't want to put an edge or anything on your knife yet so we just got you know you can kind of see what that's going to look like and then you're going to end up shaping this handle according to that steel. It's going to be a full tang knife, so the steel's going to go all the way through the handle. And then I'm just going to single pin it, and we're going to epoxy it, and then we're going to squeeze it. But um, this is where we're at. This is going to be the end of part two. And the next step is going to be heat treating the front of this. You don't can't put the handle on it and stuff, y'all, until we get some temper on this steel, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna show you that. But part three will be finishing this handle and shaping it out. So that's where we're at, y'all. You're gonna get this stuff unless you got a big six inch wheel that you can cut all the way through. 
But this is the look you're looking for. You want to cover as much steel as you can. And then you're going to sand all of that down to that steel, y'all. And we'll show you that. That'll be in part three. But as of now, we're going to set these aside. And we're going to do some heat treating. Isaac's favorite part. Heat treat. All right, y'all. We're going get to it, get it laid out for you. All right, y'all. You can heat treat. We've done it on a fire. You just throw this in a fire. Uh, you can build your own little heater if you want, but we're going to do it the easiest way I know how, and that's if you got a torch. So We didn't put that in the beginning of the video because, I mean, technically, yeah, you want to heat treat it of some sort. So this is the easiest thing we got, and Isaac's got a thing of oil used motor oil y'all now you knife makers out there is going to be you can't do that well listen we're trying to do this as backwoods as we can and if you just change somebody's oil and take it i think it works i did it before and uh, i kind of like the looks of it so we're doing a lot of torching we're just doing this uh, it's not going to be easy it's cold out here this is going to take a while and this y'all is a magnet so my trick is when this metal becomes unmagnetized that's when I'm going to quench it and it's going to be red hot but you can see it's still magnetizing It'll take a while and it's not a uniform heat treat guys this, this is going to be just the easiest knife it's for beginners you're not going to be you know doing anything fancy this is just a backyard knife build y'all just something as simple as a torch and some hand tools so you, it's going to get a lot redder than this trying to keep it going but that steel will get hot all the way through you know see, it's still magnetizing not even close just keep it in the heat and eventually it's going to get uniform a uniform redness to it I can start seeing the red coming through the other side. You guys can see that too. You can try to keep, you gotta keep going on. Just keep looking at it, keep, keep the heat to it. Keep going, never take it off the heat. Whatever you do, just keep the heat going. So you can see the middle's getting hotter than the end. Then the back cools down. And you gotta do this fast. See, it's cool, and that's why they put them in a like a block or something where it retains the heat. But it's worked for me, y'all. I don't know if I can get so cold out that it's cooling. You can see the redness is starting to go through the other side there. You can see color changing out there right there about there in the middle y'all so you gotta keep going with it y'all that, that heat's gonna retain once you keep going and keep going it's gonna get throughout that whole blade eventually you can see it's almost red all the way through you gotta keep it going I'm going to be running through Mama and Isaac here in a minute, so y'all better make my way. Without going, it ain't no very little magnetizing, very little. But I'm going to go a little bit more. I want that tip. See that tip get red hot? You see the heat? See, it's red on the other side, and I wasn't even heating it there, so. I don't want the handle hardened. I want the handle to be able to bend a little bit. 
I just want the knife part. I just want the cutting part. No, see how it is? See that stick? Nothing. We're really close. All right. I'm going to say like not even there 10 or 15 seconds and we're going to go. I showed you guys that. See here? Nothing. Sticks. That's how I kind of tell that I'm hot enough. Just a little trick. All right, I'm coming through. It's going to catch fire, you guys. It's going to catch fire. It's going to catch fire. I have a metal creek. In so, you guys, it's, Ooh, it's that, that hot. Uh, that's the dangerous part. Isaac knows he's not allowed to do that, but that's what it's going to do, y'all. That's how hot it is. It's going to ignite that oil. And Smoke means there's fire. I'm going to be honest with you. That's all I do, and I'm done with this. I don't. You can, you can stick these in the oven and bake it if you want to get real technical. But it's a cheap knife, y'all. It's just fun to make, and that's what Goodson's Adventures wants to share with you. Just keeping something simple. Yeah, you don't have to have a ton of experience. Now that's going to cool, and y'all, this is going to be the end of part two. Just let this cool. Just let it cool completely. Don't touch it. And in part three, the handle's still gonna be soft. I'm gonna be able to drill through it. And that's what part three is gonna be about. There you are, y'all. Got a quenched rough cut of a blade. And all it's gonna need shined up, an edge put on it, and a handle. Part two. Part two, signing what do you think? out. I think it's good. You're making your own knife. Yeah. Nine years old. Goodson's Adventures oh, signing out this video. Though. Signing out. We love, love you all. Love God you. Bless. God bless. Well, I want to, this is the bonus clip, y'all. I want to heat treat it. Let Isaac heat the knife up. The other one, we gotta heat treat daddy's. Yeah, I just wanna make mine good. Yeah. Yeah, I want that. I want to see if it burns that paint off. Trying to get it real hot. There's the one. Give me a little bonus clip on part two, y'all. There's a little down now. That's the one we did. And now you can see it's magnetized again. Once it cools, it'll magnetize back. And that's what she looks like dunked in that old used oil, y'all. Yeah, Right there, he's gone. It only takes him about four to five minutes. You can go a little bit longer. Ain't gonna hurt it. You wanna make sure it's the heat is all the way through. And keep it on the heat, y'all. Keep it going. Because you don't have uniform temperature, so you gotta. Some parts are going to be a little bit hotter than others when you quench it, but this is the easiest way to do it from home.
watch it catch on fire. That's what said. See how that one didn't? It didn't catch a fire, though. Oh man. And then this this used oil real thick, so it stays on there till it cools. Man, that one probably didn't do as good as Isaac's, but that's all right. If not, you can always put them in the oven and you can kind of redo it. So you can see where that line where see the difference how that heat treated as soon as I dipped it in there. Y'all see that line in there? So that tells you where the actual heat treating was taking place. It's kind of neat. It's about the same on both sides. So we got a lot more shaping to do on this knife, so I knew it was really good where I'm gonna cut this out and so. Bonus clip, y'all. Yep. We ready now. Yep. We're trying to do two at once. <laughs>